Live your passion. Automotive mechatronics involves the multidisciplinary integration of mechanical and electronic systems and refers to the skill sets needed in the contemporary advanced automotive industry. Meet Eric Makosi, a seasoned auto mechatronics technician employed by Pupkovitz BMW in the capital. This is his story. Your passion. Live your passion, yeah. The Great Zambezi region is home to Eric Makosi. It was his home village where Eric was introduced to the world of auto mechanics. The family's two tractors often developed mechanical problems during the ploughing season. The tractor will get stuck and then uh, probably it was called a diesel, um, diesel lock or uh, air lock within the diesel. If you run out of diesel, maybe the gauge was not working properly and then that's what happened. Then, then there we started knowing how do you bleed the diesel out of the tractor or to start it or those type of things. How do you push start the tractor and all those things. So I was so good in that back then and uh, remember I was, still, I was still pursuing I think my, my grade 10 at that stage. Uh, and then uh, by the time when I finished my grade 12, so I was very much passionate about mechanical and all those type of things. Although encouraged by family members to make more of his technical and mechanical talent, Eric wasn't that convinced at first. And then everybody was like, hey, but you, you know how to do mechanics just like that, but you don't even have a qualification, you don't even have a paper. I think you need to go and uh, study mechanics and all those things. Then I was like, no, man, mechanics now, man, I'll be dirty and all those type of things. So it was a thing that we were going on and on and on. Yeah, I wanted to study, I wanted to become an accountant because I didn't want to, to be dirty. Then I used to laugh at my brother because him, he was, uh, he was saying he's going to be an electrician. Then I was like, yo, those people like I see, they are climbing on the poles. You want to be like that? Ah, no, me, not me. So we used to laugh about it. Luckily, Eric heeded the call and enrolled for auto mechanics training at Vintuk Vocational Training Centre upon completing grade 12 at Caprivi Secondary. Excelling in his training, Eric was selected by Dandrick BMW for job attachment stints. So I was one of those uh, uh, high-performing artisans within that time of my era, you know. So then I was chosen by the the, 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 the Dunrick group by then to join them, you know. And then I started joining them, so I had already internship with them constantly throughout my studies. It has been quite a training journey since. After acquiring the petrol engine qualification at WVTC, Eric acquired a diesel mechanic qualification through the Trans Namib Training Centre as well. This, he followed up with a project management qualification acquired through South Africa's BMT College. However, it has been through his employment at Namibia's only BMW dealership that Eric was able to access training offered by the BMW Training Academy in South Africa. I also completed my group technician, which is a program that is offered by BMW. Also, it takes about three years, you have to become, one year you do a group technician, following year a senior technician, third year you become a master technician within the BMW industry now, which is where I am now already at the senior level. And then um, currently I'm studying at uh, IAE, Academic of Institute and Excellence. I'm pursuing my national diploma in uh, mechanical engineering as well at this point in time. 
Again, not sorry. Every new car model pushes the technological envelope. As such, BMW technicians must receive periodic updates to keep abreast of these advances and upgrade their technical skills. Training never, never stops. <laughs> um, because the cars evolve so quickly, so you've got to keep up with the new technology. And um, we've got quite a high uh, training, training budget, but by, by having that, we can ensure that our technicians is always up to scratch with the newest technology. You know, we are now in the modern world, whereas the, the technology has went up, whereas you, you combined the, the mechanical and the electronic part of it, whereas you start to diagnose certain components. But with the normal mechanics back then, or out there, who, who are not really exposed to, 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 the, to the modern, uh, modern stuff, is that uh, them, they do the way how they do it, but us here, we use machineries, computers, diagnostic computers, plugs, and all those type of things that are helping us to identify the root cause of those cars because the cars are now having computer boxes and all those type of things. The old cars, there was no computer boxes. It was just straightforward ignition, and then you start the car. So it was very easy to repair, but nowadays it's electrically controlled and everything is a little bit uh, sophisticated, you know? and uh, complicated, you know, so it's not something that you can just jump if you do not have a qualification to do such, such, uh, such a component or such a, such a problem. Mm. Having started at the bottom rung of the ladder, Eric is now a master technician, equipped with a broad skill set, a vast knowledge base and the ability to diagnose and correct even the most difficult problems. His meticulous work and dedication make him an important cog in BMW's workshop. Eric is an awesome person to work with. Uh, he is very passionate about what he's doing. He loves the brand, which is a very important. If you want to make a success of your job, uh, passion, passion stands out for me. And that's through all the years I've been in the motor industry. You've got to be passionate about what, you, what you're doing. And... Um, I, a lot of the times I actually call him Mr. BMW. His knowledge that he's got of the brand is, is remarkable. His technical knowledge, um, he's, he's a very meticulous person. I've got maybe more than 60 certificates yeah, that I acquired through BMW Academy training in South Africa, through these uh, luxurious vehicles. Yeah, I've got more than 60 qualifications that I've got. I can't mention all of them now, they are quite a lot. It's just, it just, you just have to have passion of it, and then you put your, 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 your knowledge on it, and then you just keep pushing, and then you acquire what you want at the end of the day. He's a fantastic problem solver. Um, a lot of the technicians, and please, um, I'm not saying my technicians are not capable, but if they do get to a point where they actually get stuck, they know they can go to Eric and he will, he will solve their problem for them. If he can't, he knows exactly where to go on the system, who to contact, and actually get the correct advice. The automotive industry continues to evolve, and the use of alternative powertrains, such as fuel cells, play an important role. Virtually all of the world's major automakers are shifting to an all-electric future. The way that you approach the, the electric vehicle is completely different and you're not even allowed to work on an EV vehicle if you haven't got uh, uh, the training, certified training received on that vehicle. Not on a BMW in any case. You're just not allowed. Uh, we had a case now um, a couple of weeks ago. We had a vehicle here. We've loaded it, what we call a Chara case, a technical case with BMW SA. And the first question was, what is your qualifications to check if he's allowed to work on the car? So we had to first send through his certificate and, and then they gave him the go ahead and then they assisted him with the, with the relevant instructions how to, how to proceed with the vehicle. Uh, the systems that uh, we do have there, in the, it's, it's, it's connected you know, up to German. So everything that we do on the cars, there's what is called faster data. Everything is, 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 is stored 
and everybody can see, even the people in South Africa, the people in Germany, if we, are do, if we do have a problem with that specific car or anything like that, anybody can see what happened, what you have done. It's not something that it's only you who's got access to it. Eric's self-discipline and work ethic make him stand out. A lifelong learner, he appreciates that his journey can inspire other technically inclined Namibians to consider auto mechatronics as a viable career path. But within this industry, it's like they, they are going to hire more technicians because the cars that are being bought, they need to be repaired and they need manpower. So it's not going to be too much of elect electrical stuff or plug and play or stuff like that. Look at an example. I can give you an example like uh, car parks. We used to have people, you know, opening gates and all those type of things, but that is already phased away due to that they brought electrical stuff. So there's no jobs for those people. But within the mechanical trade, so you can still see there's still future on that because they, they, we need people to do them, the work for that because components are not going to fix themselves. They need people to fix those components. So that's why I say this trade, I think it's one of the best and you will not stay out without a job at least it's something better that the, 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 the youngsters can look after. Well, you've got to work hard. That's, that's of paramount importance. And, and you shouldn't be scared to, to, to get your hands dirty. And you've got to love your job. Away from the busy BMW workshop, Eric keeps a low profile, spending quality time with his small family tops his list. I'm very proud of him, of the man he used to be. From the time we started, he was just a student at VTC, and he was, a, is it intern or? Yes. A British, yeah, at BMW, that's when we met back then. That was 2011. It's a very hard-working man. He's one person who that he just doesn't sleep all day. He's always, he always has to find something to do. Yeah, in order to provide for the family. Look, with uh, the skills and expertise that one has, you know, sometimes you come home, the wife will tell you, listen, the, the cupboard is falling apart, you know? I'm not just as, a, as an... A, technician or something like that, I'll fix that cupboard, you know, or the, the tap, there's something wrong there, it's leaking. I'll, I'll, I've got tools that I have on my own that I'll fix it immediately. So I do a couple of things, you know, go outside, sometimes water the garden, you know, and do those type of things. He's kind and if I have a problem, he helps me with them. I only remember him when he used to, to love cars <laughs> and also he used to play in our school team while well, I was just, um, I never liked soccer, <laughs> so I just used to watch him and the rest of the team play. He was good, I don't know about now, <laughs> he was good when he was young. <laughs> I'm inviting you one day, you must come. So, but I still have got the touch for it, you know, so it's not yet gone. So like I'm inviting you so we can come and go in there, even for two minutes. So I just dribble you a little bit. <laughs> Eric Makosi. His story teaches us the value of diligence as one of the key ingredients of individual success. Diligent people have an extra edge. Their steady, earnest and energetic effort, persistence and tenacity help them towards realizing their goals and that becomes the deciding factor for their extraordinary success in life. 
In his own words, the power is in you, not someone else, to achieve your goals. He is living his passion. This insert is brought to you by the Namibia Training Authority as part of its Live Your Passion advocacy campaign to create awareness amongst young Namibians about technical and vocational careers. Join us again next week for another inspiring episode.